I just had to do an update. So Stefan gave me a tip that there is also a transient operating point back annotation. So let's check it out. So I have my uh, X scheme. And let's, let me show you the uh, schematic that I'm actually running simulations on. No, that's not the one. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, DB, CNR, OT, and this is a switch cap amplifier. And let me zoom in a bit. So I've taken the fully differential op amp, and actually let's flip the color scheme. So I've taken the fully differential op amp and put it into an example switch cap circuit where we have a proportional to absolute temperature current source based on the uh, difference in uh, the base emitter voltage between two diodes bias the different current densities. So the current that comes out of this bias source is a proportional to absolute temperature current. We put that into a couple of resistors and then we sample that voltage, which is pretty small, across a couple of capacitors towards the virtual ground of the op amp. And in the second phase, well, in the first phase, we also reset the feedback capacitor. So in second phase, the when we st at start of the second phase, the feedback capacitors has zero charge. And as um, we short the left side here of the uh, input capacitors, that will lead to a common voltage on the left side and a common voltage on the right side because of the common mode. And thus we have no differential charge. But since we do this in a non-overlapping manner, there cannot be a loss of charge. As such, the differential charge <laughs> will be across the feedback capacitor. And in this case, I've made my feedback capacitor five times smaller than my input capacitor. So I expect a gain of five. And if I go to my simulation, let's clear that off and run that. <coughs> so I like to run that on the, <laughs> uh, on the terminal. One of the reasons I like to do that is because this uh, script stuff I have around, CIC sim or six sim as some of my students call it, that has the ability to actually run a SHA algorithm or a hash algorithm on all the input files in the SPICE file and figure out if the SPICE file has changed. And if it hasn't, then it doesn't rerun the simulation. So maybe we can demonstrate that if I guess I... Well, what's going to change the SPICE file here? Probably if I add a name to a node that doesn't have a name. Do I have that here? Yeah, this one. If I call this loop V loop I don't think I have that name let's see here and then I can go back and I can just rerun same command and it'll discover that the spice file has changed and then it'll rerun the simulation it just saves me a bit of time but the point of this video is to show you how do I get the transient operating point so Stefan showed me that that was possible but I sort of run my simulations outside X scheme and I don't want to set up a full test bench in next game to sort of um, have everything in there. I want to reuse my test bench. So I have my test bench back here. And what I've added is just a save all and a save current. So if I run with the option debug, because normally I don't save all the currents. And then I have made a schematic, which is not a full schematic test bench it is just to capture the operating point. So it only has one instance of my circuit. And here I've used the same instance name, xdot, as I have in my spice file. So in this xdot.spy, there is my switch capacitor amplifier instantiated as xdot. OK. So let's see. Yeah, that's run. Then I have a waveform or a graph, uh, where I'm plotting the VO. And I also have a command here, which might be a bit hard to read for you guys. But anyway, it's a load waves symbol. And it runs a tickle command to do a raw read of 
the um, transient uh, at 125 degrees. So if I control click that one, then we can see, well, yeah, you can see it, uh, that my waveform comes up. Now here we can also see that during the sampling phase, haha, this is the cool part, right? So here you can see I'm dragging my cursor and let me zoom in a bit so you can actually see it. You can see, um, oh, where did it go? There we go. I'm dragging my cursor and the output voltage shows up. You see that? So at any point, I can click it here. We can go into my circuit and now we can see we're in phase one because the uh, phase one signal is at 1.8 volts. Let's go in here. So that means that we should be sampling our input voltage on top of the capacitors. So we can see the uh, neg the negative um, top plate capacitor, or this is actually a bottom plate, doesn't matter. <laughs> the left side of the capacitor is at uh, roughly zero, and then the right side is at 0 0.14. The, sorry, not the right side, but the, the positive uh, left side. <laughs> And on the common mode side, we can see that both of them are close to 0.96, and that's really set by the output common mode since that's shorted. And we can also see that the voltage across the feedback capacitors is relatively close to zero. And now I can go back up, and I can move my cursor. So let's move that over to where we have amplification. And now we can see that my differential output voltage is changed. We can go in and now we should be in phase two. So here we can see that the uh, left side, uh, we've shorted the left side of the capacitors. Now the voltage, the DC voltage on the left side, that's just gonna find a common mode. It doesn't really matter for the circuit because as long as the voltage is the same on the capacitors on both sides, there will be no differential charge. And all the differential charge will be across the feedback capacitors. Now, we you can notice, however, that the voltage on the, uh, on the virtual ground is not exactly the same. We can see we have 0 0.9439 here, 0 0.9436. So what's that? Uh, 0 0.3 millivolts difference? So that's gonna give us a slight difference in uh, the uh, charge transfer. But anyway, pretty cool, fantastic. <laughs> really easy to see what's going on. And, and the cool part is you can drill down further in the circuit and every node will be annotated. You can even go inside my predefined transistors and you can see, let's see, can we see the current? Oh, I can't see it now. No, these are just the voltages. So if I did extract the currents, I think I would also see the um, those. Pretty cool, eh? <laughs> this is just excellent. I mean, it, it's so much easier to, to see the uh, operating point in this manner instead of plotting every single circuit. Cool. Really, really cool. And th I really like the fact that I don't need to have a full schematic test bench, I can just have the same name <laughs> on the instant name and it'll figure it out. And I can use this pretty graph to uh, s see what my value is. I wonder if this has some sort of value extraction. Okay. Have a fantastic day.